This is a short video about what a metric is. So what is a metric on a set? And so on a set X. And what a metric is, it's essentially uh, a distance. It's a way to measure how far apart two elements in a particular set are. And uh, it's a uh, thing about a distance. We call that thing a distance function, if you will. And so how we'll write this thing, we usually use D. So again, emphasize kind of distance. Um, so a metric is this function D. And so it's a function that has two inputs. So the way that we're going to write this, it's from x cross x to r. So how should you read this? You're going to plug in an ordered pair like x comma y. So such that uh, a bunch of things happen. So d of x, y. So again, you're plugging in an ordered pair, uh, two things that come from your set x. And this says that it spits out a real number, in case you haven't seen that before. But a metric should satisfy that uh, the output is always non-negative for all x, y uh, in your set. So in other words, the distance between two points should be at least 0, um, 2. When does it equal 0? That happens um, if and only if the inputs are the same. So the only time that two points are 0 units away from each other is when you actually got the same point. Uh, number three is that this distance function, it's kind of it's symmetric. It doesn't matter what order uh, you talk about the distance in. Distance from x to y is the same as a distance from y to x. Uh, and the last one is uh, the maybe the hardest one to verify sometimes. It's the triangle inequality. And uh, I'll, I'll write it, write down that name, and then I'll write down how you say it in a formula. So what if you had three points in your set, x, y, and z? It tells us that the distance from, say, x to y is always less than or equal to the distance from x to z plus the distance from z to y. So if you like, think about that z as like an intermediate point um, from x to y. And there's a, a nice picture you can kind of think of again. If you had this is x, and this is, you know, if I was actually drawing a triangle, if this is x and this is z, say this is y. So I'm drawing something like in the plane, say. But, uh, you know, what we're saying is, um, I want to write it that way. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, in this case, I'm saying that the distance from here to here should definitely be less than or equal to the distance from here to here. I should probably use a different color. How about green? Uh, the distance from there to there plus this blue distance from y to z. So if you add the green and the blue, that should be bigger than the orange down there, which maybe isn't too hard to believe. Okay, so then that is, again, the definition of what a metric is. So it's a function on your set, or on uh, the product of your set, I guess you can say it that way. And uh, it should satisfy these four properties. So like, let's talk about what are some metrics that, uh, what are some examples of some metrics on some different sets? So we'll start off with, you know, what are, what are the ones we're probably most comfortable with? So let's say that uh, X is just the real numbers here. And let's say D uh, from R cross R to R is just dxy is equal to absolute value x minus y. So what are we doing? We're looking at a number line. Here's x, here's y. What does d do? d literally just measures how far is it from x to y. That's what this quantity is here. Uh, in this case, this is a metric. It's called the usual metric on r. So usual metric on r. And so you might think about trying to verify properties one through four for this absolute value metric there. So like in this case, is it true that say absolute value of x minus y is always bigger than or equal to zero? Yeah, that's certainly true. And when does it equal zero? Well, that's only when the inside's equal to zero. So two is true as well. doesn't matter what order you plug in in. You could do some algebra, just factor out a negative one. And then you know the triangle inequality uh, holds for the absolute value. Another example would be what if your set was R2 now, so the plane. So how do we talk about if I'm in the plane, if I've got these two points, say x1, y1, and let's say this is x2, y2, what's one way to talk about how far apart these points are from each other? Well, one way to do that would be to use the usual distance function. So let's say d of x1, y1, um, x2, y2, how do we usually write that? We would say maybe x1 minus x2 quantity squared plus y1 minus y2 quantity squared. It's just the usual distance function from like college algebra say. We're gonna give it a different name than usual distance function from college algebra. We're gonna call this D the Euclidean metric. Uh, 
And so this satisfies again um, one through four of these properties uh, above in this case. The reason that we're going to call this the Euclidean metric is because um, you know this two here is not special. So like for example, I'll try to draw you R three. If that is your set X is equal to R three here, say so this is X, this is Y, this is Z. You know if you had two points in space, X one, Y one, uh, Z one, and and uh, x2, y2, z2, how do you talk about the distance between those two points in space? Well, it looks a whole heck of a lot like the distance function from R2. We just know we need to add inside of there plus you know, z1 minus z2 quantity squared. And so the point then is that you know, in n-dimensional space, this three is not special either. Maybe what I'll say is for Rn, which we'll, you know, and we might call Euclidean space, so if x is equal to rn, you always have Euclidean metric. Maybe I could say can have or could consider could have Euclidean metric, um, which is defined by. So in this case, you know you've got two n tuples, say, where n maybe you've got a point with a hundred slots. If you want to think of it that way. I'll write x1 through xn, and then I'll write y1 through yn. So those are my two n tuples. And how do I calculate the distance between the two? So here's where maybe some summation notation comes in to help us. But at the end of the day, I know that I should take the difference in the first two slots quantity squared, plus the difference in the next two slots, x2 minus y2 quantity squared, and so on, and add those up and take the square root. So how I'm going to say that is I'm going to do xi minus yi quantity squared, and I'm going to add all these up where I, I'll start with the ones as my index, so I goes from one, and the last ones I should consider is the index n, so I goes from one to n, and then we said we should take the square root of that. And a less sloppy way to do that, just as you know, some books would probably more, more likely write the one half power than a square root. So the distance between two n tuples is this uh, square root of the, uh, some of the squares of the distances between the components. That was a goofy way to say that. Point though, this is a metric. This thing satisfies one through four as well. So all these three functions have these common properties that they satisfy, or have, have this in common, that they satisfy these four properties. I'm gonna give you two examples of metrics that you probably haven't seen before. Let's say I had a really goofy set like A, B, C. And I'm gonna tell you about how do I define a distance between A and B, A and C, and so on. So let's say, let's let D, uh, D of X, Y, where X and Y get to assume one of the values, A, B, or C. The distance between two things, X and Y, uh, is equal to, let's say one, if X is not equal to Y, and let's say zero, if X is equal to Y. So this thing is a metric, and this is called the discrete metric. Discrete metric. All right, so uh, maybe it would be good to, um, how come, I'll do a few of these anyway. So like uh, for number one, is it true that say, you know, D, A, B, maybe I should say it this way. D, X, Y, is it true that that's bigger than or equal to zero for all X, Y, and X? Uh, well, yeah, it's either one or it's zero. And so sure, it's bigger than or equal to zero. So that's not too hard. And when does it equal zero? So that's part two of what it means for D to be a metric. D of X, Y equals zero. Uh, well, that only happens whenever the inputs are the same, whenever X is Y. So if and only if X is equal to Y. So in other words, like distance from A to A is zero, B to B is zero, C to C is zero, but no other time. Um, number three, the distance from say X to Y, well, that should be, again, it's either one or it's zero. Uh, when is it one? So distance from X to Y is, maybe we could write it this way, you know, case one. If X is not equal to Y, then D X Y, equals one, but then if X is not equal to Y, that's the same as saying that Y is not equal to X. So D Y X is equal to one. The point D X Y equals D Y X. So remember I needed that symmetry. Now maybe for another case, case two, if X is equal to Y, then in that case, sure, D X Y is equal to D Y X since the inputs are the same. And I know in that case it's zero according to how this metric is defined. So this uh, bottom part of that piecewise function. And maybe also the triangle inequality might be something to, to verify by cases similar to this as well. So maybe I'll leave that exercise. Triangle inequality.
should put that in parentheses. Try inequality. That would be a good exercise to try to verify. I'm going to give you just one more example of a, of a metric that's it's a little less intuitive than like the Euclidean metric again. So let's say your set x was the set of all functions, continuous functions in particular. So like you're thinking college algebra calculus, you could draw its graph without picking up your pencil. That's great. Continuous functions on some interval from A to B, and those are supposed to be brackets. So I just mean like closed interval. Um, I'll be more precise about closed in this class. Let's say including its endpoints. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to define a way to talk about how far apart two continuous functions are in this interval. So let's say the distance between two functions, f and g, so f and g are continuous functions from a to b. Let's say the distance between these two things, we're gonna measure that by the, in, the definite integral from a to b of the absolute value of f of t minus g of t dt. This thing is a metric. So this is a way to, to measure the distance between two functions on this interval from A to B. And I just want to give you a picture of like, what is this thing doing to remind you of some calculus, say? So when I think about F and I think about G, maybe it's useful to think about its graph. I've picked out two points, A and B, ahead of time. So that's like the only, the only inputs I'm considering are real numbers between A and B. And then maybe I'll draw you some graphs. So let's pretend, let's say F looks like this. And let's pretend, let's say G looks like this. And I only care about what's going on from A to B again. So I'll say that's G, and I'll say this green one is F. What on earth does this thing do? Uh, just remember when you compute the integral of the difference between two functions, um, you're trying to talk about the area between the two curves. And what this absolute value does is it keeps track of, you know, you're always doing top minus bottom, if you remember that from calculus. And the absolute value makes sure that any time that the function's graph flip-flop, who's on top and who's on bottom, so like uh, if I were to a different color here they flip-flop in these spots right the absolute value is taking care of that it's uh keeping track of when they flip-flop so the point then this integral that i've written up here it measures the area between these two curves from a to b and what we're going to say is whatever that purple area is that is what d that's what the distance between those two functions is so i'm going to color this purple I'll try to there yeah it looks great Cool. And you can kind of see too, in that case, you'd verify one through four that this is a metric. And so usually how these things go is that one through three, one through three that I'm referring to being in the definition of what a metric is, one through three usually aren't too hard. Usually the triangle inequality is the hardest one. Um, and that, again, is something I'd probably leave for, for you to think about if you're watching this video. But uh, you kind of see some, to give you some more intuition behind like what's going on here. You know, we're saying that maybe two functions are close to each other. Whenever this area between the two functions, whenever this purple shaded region, whenever that's small. So that's when two functions might be close to each other. Again, these are just kind of a handful of examples to help wrap your head around what a metric.